So we'll start off. I've got a few of these uh, patterns here. They've been uh, machined from extruded polystyrene board, um, pattern cut on just with woodworking tools and a router, and assembled into this uh, pattern with uh, this type of uh, gate and sprue configuration. They're done in uh, halves because the uh, it helps keep flimsy patterns like this straight when you pack them in the mold. But I've got a few of these made, and uh, I'm going to get greedy today. I've, I've been uh, casting them one at a time. I'm going to try to cast two of them. I've got my uh, A20 charged up, and uh, it takes about eight pounds um, with the uh, cup volume and everything. The parts aren't that heavy, but probably a good third or more of that is uh, in the sprue cup and gating system. But um, I'll be placing them in here, a couple of them at a time. And uh, I'll show you how they look as I'm packing them up and vibrating them in place. All right, so I'm pretty cautious about how I initially pack them. I just take this uh, quart um, plastic cup here and ladle in the sand one at a time, trying to keep the sand equally um, uh, filled on both sides of the pattern so the sand pressure is the same and it won't deflect the pattern and then when it's uh, you know partially full like this I'll go ahead and turn the vibrator on for, for a minute or two So that really locks them in place uh, pretty tight there, so they're positioned well. I can be a little bit more aggressive now about how I fill the rest of the flask. And uh, since these are really long parts, I mean, it's probably 25 inches or so, 26 inches from, from sprue to the bottom of the part, I've got an extension here for my flask that I clamp on the top. And uh, it'll just go on here like this, and i got a locking ring clamp that goes around it that extends the flask. And I'll go ahead and the next step is, is just to fill and pack the uh, flask right up to the bottom or the top of where the, uh, the sprues are. So let's, uh, I'll do that and rejoin the video here. All right, well, we got the flask packed right up to the top of the sprue. The next step is for me to install the pouring cups. So these are pouring cups that I've made out of a moldable ceramic fiber. Um, they're similar to an offset uh, pouring basin uh, that uh, helps keep the uh, aluminum flowing properly into the mold. But you can see the interior, there's a weir down there. There's a one inch hole in the bottom of it that fits the uh, diameter of the sprue. And then I've got these saddles that the uh, pouring cup sits in. And uh, that allows me, after they're full of metal, to pull them out um, after the pour is made, but the, uh, the metal is still molten. So the metal runs out, and that just leaves a thin foil uh, inside the cup, and I can pull that foil out and reuse these cups. And they're very insulating and very resistant to uh, metal contact. So, uh, and um, they make for, to help eliminate turbulence in introducing uh, bifilms and uh, other um, oxides uh, into the pour. But all I need to do is position it and uh, just rotate it a little bit and uh, only maybe an eighth of an inch engagement or so on the sprue. And then uh, I'll uh, go ahead and fill the flask up the rest of the way to the top of them and these will be ready to pour. We're packed up full, and uh, as you probably heard, the vibration was still hammering on it there a bit, but uh, this mold is packed and ready to be poured, and hopefully, successfully. I've got um, the A20 all loaded up, probably should be pouring in about 15 minutes or so. I'll uh, try to video that as well, but uh, it's cold out today. It's around freezing, and 
I'm hoping that uh, the duration of the pour time keeps me in good shape as far as the pour temperature. Um, all the previous pours have taken 30 seconds total duration, so I'll be hanging over the first one probably for a half a minute and the second one for a half a minute, and it only takes me about uh, 10 seconds usually to get from the furnace to the cup. So with the bigger crucible with the A20, I don't think it'll lose as much heat because it's so much more massive. So, and plus, I think I, like I said, I think I get to the cup pretty fast. So hopefully everything will come out just fine and uh, I'll uh, not be getting too greedy here. Next step up, the pour. All right, well, we're going to try to get a twofer here. I've got the uh, A20 all charged up and at temperature. I already did the final skim. I got two patterns in the flask, and I'm going to try to pour two of these automotive filters, and hopefully uh, I won't be getting too greedy here. We'll see. Here it goes. Well, I'd say seems to have gone like the first couple pours, so uh, um, I was having a hard time keeping a continuous pour there just because of the pause that you usually get with lost foam and slinging around 40 pounds of uh, crucible and metal, but um, I think it's all right. We'll see. We'll see what happens when we demold them. All right, well, it's been a few minutes, so uh, time for the demolding. We'll see if I've got uh, two full parts or not. Here she goes.
First one looks promising. And number two also looks promising. All right, I'll get that uh, sand spread out, try to decide whether I'm going to go for number three today or not. But uh, I'll uh, get those cooled off and blow all the uh, refractory coating off of them, and we'll have a closer look at them and see how they turned out. All right, well, let's have a look at what... Uh, how things turned out here after that uh, double pour. First off, maybe just uh, take a look at the uh, pouring cup. You can see I, uh, I mentioned that I reuse them and I just kind of yanked this skin out of here with a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, the cups are got a little bit of draft to them, so if you're careful, they pull out just fine. Same thing with this one here. You can see it's empty and unscathed, and here is the skin that came out of that one. So I'll tuck those away. They'll be ready for reuse. So let's see here. You remember that we uh, started with a uh, coated pattern like this one here. And uh, we had a double pour today. So let's see how those turned out. Um, first thing, let's take a look at this one back here. You can see that big blob on top that's where I, I pull the pouring cup out and it's still got liquid aluminum in it and I do that of course just so I can use them but if you pull them slow uh, basically the aluminum just takes the place of uh, the space that the pouring cup was uh, taken up and you still have head pressure on that but uh, basically the show is over by this point so you either got a, a good pour or you don't but um, the rest of it you see the gate there they run all the way down the side and contact just a 3 16 inch wide lip uh, on each edge of the filter lid and base. But you can see um, from this one here, um, it's dirty as most of the lost foam castings are, but um, yeah, it's a good part. And uh, you can see from the back side, I'll have to degate them on the table saw, you know, like I always do and clean them up. But uh, there's the first one. And then uh, here's the second one. So um, same story there. The pouring cup's on at a little different angle there. But um, you can see that uh, everything is formed in there. And uh, yeah, uh, it'll need some cleanup. But uh, I've got, uh, I'm sure that they'll, they'll clean up just fine. And when I media blast them, they'll look like these first couple that I've made here. Um, they're all colored up and then... Uh, I just uh, kiss each side with the uh, belt sander and drill the holes where they need to be. But uh, you can see a couple of them in the foreground here. And they've all come out just just fine. And they look pretty much like the, uh, the two you see there before um, I cleaned them up. But just a little bit of uh, um, communing with the table saw, a carbide blade on the table saw, and then uh, 
belt sanding on the flat surfaces and media blasting them and they're pretty much ready to use. So I think that's going to be it for today, folks. Uh, we're going to call it quits. It's, uh, it's actually Thanksgiving Day. I got some casting in in the morning. Go in and help out and get some family time in and not sure when the next time is I'll have a chance to cast that, uh, that third one. Uh, but uh, hey, that's what hobby life's all about, right? You, you take it as you can get it. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll have another go sometime in the near future.